Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to do the second part of 9.1, which is properties of radicals. Uh, this is part two, so if you have not yet watched part one, please do that first, and uh, today's lesson will make a lot more sense to you. Please open up your journals to page 280. So we need to simplify the, all these expressions here. And if you look at numbers 13 and 14, I'm going to treat these two different ways. Uh, sometimes it's easier to simplify the fraction first, and sometimes it's easier not to simplify the fraction first. If I look at number uh, 13, I notice that I can change this to uh, a big square root of 15 over 500 and then simplify this because it because 500 is not a perfect square, but 100 is. So if I divide by 5 on the top and the bottom, it'll make this a little bit easier. This now becomes the square root of 3 over 100, which is, we can break it apart now, so square root of 3 over the square root of 100. The square root of 3 just stays as square root of 3 because we cannot simplify that, and the square root of 100 is 10. This cannot be simplified any further, so that is my answer for number 13. You'll notice on number 14 we have the square root of 100, which is 10. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm not going to simplify 8 over 100. So we have the square root of 8 over the square root of 100. The square root of 8 simplifies because we have 8, which is 4 times 2, and then 2 times 2. We need to take out a group of 2, and we have 1 group or 1, 2 left over. So that's going to be 2 square root of 2 over 10. The last thing I can do is I notice I can simplify 2 over 10 into 1 over 5. So my final answer is the square root of 2 over 5 for number 14. Number for number 15, uh, I can't simplify the numbers because 3 and 80 don't simplify. However, my x squared and my x simplifies, and also not a y to the third and y to the third also simplify. So let's simplify those. So we have x squared over x and y to the third over y. Well, y to the third, sorry, over y to the third. So y to the third over y to the third cancel to a 1, so they're gone. x squared over x just simplifies to a single x to the power of 1 on the top. So I'm going to rewrite this now. We have the square root of 3x over the square root of 80. So now we're going to simplify this 80 here. We can break down this 80 a bit. So 80 is 8 times 10. And we have three 2's off of the 8. And we have a 2 and a 5 off of the 10. So I can take out groups of 2, remember. So I have uh, one group of 2 and two groups of 2. And then we have a 5 left over. So on the numerator, I still have th square root of 3x. And on the denominator, I have 2 times 2, which is 4, square root of 5. Now this leaves me with a little bit of a problem because I've got a root on the denominator, which I need to get rid of. So I have to multiply by a magical 1 in order to get rid of that root. Since it's root 5, my magical 1 is going to be square root of 5 over square root of 5. All right, so let's continue this. Um, on the top, I have square root of 3x multiplied by square root of 5. So I, they can't break apart any, so I'm just going to keep them together. So that's going to be square root of 15x. And on the denominator, I have 4 multiplied by these become square root of 25, which is 5. So it's 4 multiplied by 5, which is 20. And I cannot simplify that. Some people think, oh, I've got a 15 and a 20. We can simplify those. But that's actually incorrect because it's not actually 15. It's the square root of 15, which is quite different. So that just stays as is. On number 16, I've got a third root of 16 on the denominator. So this is going to be 4 times 4, and I have 2, 2, and 2, 2. And since it's a third root, I take out a group of 3 2s, and I have 1, 2 that's left over. So on, my on the top, I have 8, and on the bottom, I have 
two, one of the twos I can take out, and then the third root of two is left there as well. Now, there's a couple of things that need to happen. First of all, I notice that I can simplify eight over two into four over one. So let's rewrite that. So we're gonna have four over the third root of two. Second thing that I notice is that I have a root on the denominator, which is a problem. I need to rationalize my denominator, which means I need to multiply by a magical one. Now, it gets a little bit confusing because I have the third root. So I have a third root of two, which means I have one two, but I need two more twos. So I'm gonna write it this way, third root of two times two, so I can have three of them. And then of course, whatever I multiply by on the bottom needs to be the same on the top because this should be a magical one. So now let's see if we can finish this. We have four and then the third root of four is on the top. On the denominator, I have a third root of eight, which is what those two are. And the third root of eight is two. I see one more thing I can simplify. I have four over two, which is two. So my final answer is two and then third root of four. And that'll be my answer for number 16. On number 17, 18, 19, and 20, uh, we have an issue on the denominators because all of them have a root. Now it's a little bit more complicated of a denominator because there's a minus sign in this case or there might be a plus in other problems. But uh, we're gonna be taking advantage of something called, if you remember, the difference of two squares property, which is when you have a plus b times a minus b, you end up getting a squared minus b squared. So if you remember that rule uh, from quite a while ago, uh, we're gonna be using this property to help us rationalize the denominator. So here's how we do that. We're gonna multiply by our magical one, and in this case, our magical one is going to be the exact same thing as the denominator, but instead of, it's the opposite sign that's in the middle. So in this case, it's a minus, which means we're gonna change it to a plus. So it'll be negative three plus three root three, over negative three plus three root three. What that ha what happens is that these these turn in. We're going to put parentheses around all of these because it'll help us um, with the next step. So on the numerator, we're going to take our five and multiply it in, just like the distributive property. So we have five multiplied by negative three plus three square root of three. And then on the denominator, using this rule over here now, we're gonna have a squared minus b squared. So that's gonna be our a, in this case, is negative three squared and then minus, and our b is three square root of three squared. Okay, so now I'm going to distribute in my five, and that will give us negative 15 plus 15 square root of three, and on the denominator, I have negative three squared, so that's gonna be positive nine minus, and we have three squared multiplied by square root of three squared. So on the top, I have negative 15 plus 15 square root of three. And on the denominator, I have, I'm just gonna look at it this way, I have nine minus, and this is gonna be nine, multiplied by three squared, or square root of three squared is just three. So it's nine multiplied by three, which is 27. So we have nine minus 27. So that simplifies to negative 15 plus 15 square root of three, all over negative 18. Okay, we are almost done, not quite because notice that I have a common factor between 15 and 18 and also this 15 and 18. Because there's a, uh, a plus there, we have to think about distributing or factoring out a three. So if we factor out a three out of both of these and this, this becomes, we have to divide by three, divide by three, divide by three, 
So my final answer is going to be negative 5 plus 5 squared of 3 all over negative 6. And this is my answer for number 17. Okay, we definitely need to practice this again. On number 18, we're going to multiply by our magical 1. And in this case, it's going to be exactly the same as this, except for instead of a plus sign this time, I'm going to have it as a minus sign. So 4 minus 4 root 5. And so that'll be on the top as well. And so that means that on the numerator, we have 3 multiplied by 4 minus 4 square root of 5. And on the denominator, using that difference of two squares pattern, I have 4 squared minus 4 root 5 squared. So now we'll distribute what's on the numerator. So we have 3 times 4 is 12 minus 3 times 4, negative 4 is negative 12 root 5. And then on the denominator, I have 16 minus, okay, let's see if we can figure out what this is going to be. This is going to be 4 squared, which is 16, square root of 5 squared is 5. So it's 16 multiplied by 5, which is 80. So 16 minus 80 goes here. So now we have 12 minus 12 square root of 5 all over negative 64. Once again, we can do a little bit of simplifying here and here by dividing by 4 all on all three parts here. So my final answer is going to be 3 minus 3 square root of 5 all over negative 16. And that's what we get for number 18. All right, I'm going to do one more with you, and I'll have you do one in your own. So number 19, uh, our magical one is the square root of 2 plus 5 root 3 over the square root of 2 plus 5 root 3. So that means that we have 4 multiplied by the square root of 2 plus 5 root 3 all over the square root of 2 squared minus 5 square root of 3 squared. Okay, so let's multiply in our 4. So we have 4 square root of 2 plus 20 square root of 3 all over 2 minus, and now we have 5 squared is 25 multiplied by square root of 3 squared is 3. So 25 multiplied by 3 is 75. Okay, so now we have 4 square root of 2 plus 20 square root of 3 all over negative 73. And there is nothing that simplifies here and here. So that means that this is our answer for number 19. Please pause the video and try number 20 on your own. Here's what I got for number 20. Please check your answer and see how you did. If you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. All right, we're going to skip to number 24. So if you take a look at number 24, what I need to do on this one is simplify what I have and then combine any like terms if possible. So I can uh, simplify the 12 into 4 times 3, and this is 2 times 2. So I can take out one of these 2s, multiply it by that 3 that's already out front, and I get a 6. The 3 is left under the root, so we're going to leave that there. The 18 simplifies, uh, it breaks down into 9 and 2, and then this is 3 and 3. So this 3 comes out, multiplies by that 3 that's out front, so that'll be 9. The 2 is left under the root. And lastly, I have 27, breaks down into 9 times 3, and the 9 is 3 and 3. So I can take out a 3, multiply it by that 2 that's out front, so that's 6 squared of 3. Now I look and see if I can combine any like terms. I notice that these two are like terms. They both have a square root of 3 on them. So we add together the 6 and the 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. So we get 12 square root of 3. And we still have this 9 square root of 2. Since it has a square root of 2 instead of a square root of 3, it does not combine together with the other two terms. I would like for you to please do numbers 22 and 23 on your own. Please check your answers on number 22 and 23. 
let's take a look at number 26. Hopefully you recognize that this is a difference of two squares. They're both exactly the same, except for there's a minus sign here and a plus sign there. So a difference of two squares means that we follow that pattern a squared minus b squared. So the square root of 7 squared minus the square root of 3 squared. So that gives us 7 minus 3, which is 4 as an answer. Let's take a look at number 27. We need to distribute in this third root of 2. So it's going to become, now I'm going to keep these separate, what's inside, because I have to break it apart anyway. So I'll just keep them separate like that. So the third root and this next one will be 2 multiplied by 135. So let's break down 100, 108. We have 4 times 27. This is 2 times 2 and 3 times 3 times 3. So notice that we have a group of 2's that we can came out, come, take out. Remember we're working with a third root here, so we need to take out groups of 3. We can also take out one of those 3's as well. So 2 multiplied by 3 is 6, so this first one is 6. Let's break down 135 and see what happens here. So we have 5 times 27, and that's going to be 3 3's. So there's a group of 3 3's, this 2 and this 5 do not have any partners, so they will stay under the root. So we will do minus, and then 3, and then we have third root of 2 times 5, which is 10. And so this is the answer for number 27. Please do number 25 on your own. Here's my answer for number 25. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.